What's up guys and welcome to this week's video of We Are The Bonsai Supply. This is Mari and I am Jerome. Today we're gonna show you the live Q&A that we had a couple weeks ago with Ed Trout, Adam Lavigne and Jerome. They talk about bottomwoods, desert roses and jades. Yes, so that was a lot of fun. So let's go and check it out. Let's do it. <laughs> hey Adam, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yes. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is Marie and Jerome. For those that don't know us, um, I'm going to um, uh, mute everybody. So the word is going to work is that you have, um, you have a chat and you also have um, the option of raise your hand. So you can type in the chat, I have a question and I want to participate or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you and give you the chance to talk to Adam, to show him your tree, if you have one with you, or just ask him questions. So, okay. Unmute Joe. Here you go. Hi. <laughs> Joe, hello. Hello. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing well. Um, got a question on this guy here. Um, this thickening in here and it's pretty ugly can this just be something that can be just cut or is it like too much because it's into the root here can you see that look at from that side you see it yeah you you can it's, one of the great one of the great things about potulacaria is that you can shave them off uh and it will just heal it heals just like our skin uh, it, it does not heal like a, a, a regular tree where it has to close like this. When you cut it, it just heals. It'll just right heal there. over. Yeah. So just keep It'll it out of just... the keep it out of the sun. Keep it out of the wetness. You know, when you water it, just water like with a, a water bottle or something like that. But it'll right. heal because it, it actually looks like uh, that that it was looks, cut once before. It looks, yes, it was. Um, I mean, it was like that. I didn't do that. What it actually probably did was it rotted. Um, I can I can guess maybe you got that at the convention from Mike Cartret. Uh, it wasn't Mike Cartret? It was the other Mike at the other end of the room. <laughs> oh, Mike Blum. Okay. The yeah, little the two, Mike. <laughs> the, the two Mikes. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a that's an amazing uh, amazing little tree. Yeah, it's a cute little tree. Um, okay, so then anything like with this one here then too, um, the thickness, I don't know if you could see this here. I can just cut this all around and thin it out a little, right? Yeah, I could rotate the thickness of the branch or what? Right here. I don't know if you can see this branch to here. It's like a ridge. Okay. You Did see it? Maybe did it split? Oh, I see that. Yeah, that little. Yeah, I, I would just shave that off. You can just shave it off and just use the regular cut paste. No, no, no cut paste at all. Just None at it, all. Yeah, just let it dry out and on its own. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Good seeing you. We still have one more carving class to do. Yes. So don't forget that. <laughs> okay. And, and thanks, remi Adam. Remind me when I do that to bring the the tiki guy I carved. For okay. You. Good. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. So next, Jerome is going to say it because I'm so okay. bad with names. <laughs> so next, we're going to unmute the Ahmed. Ahmed. There you go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, yes, Adam. Hello. It's been a long time. I wanted to talk with you. Actually, I'm in Nairobi. We are past midnight. Oh, wow. Uh, Do you have some, str have some strong the, coffee? Do you have strong coffee to keep you awake? Uh, actually, I don't take coffee. <laughs> no coffee? Uh-oh. What I wanted to ask you, these are all uh, Portugala Afra, right? Yes. What I have over here are Crassula Owata. Okay. They are, all, they are jet, but the leaves are bigger. Yes. Now, I have a problem that whenever I use insecticide on other trees, this, even if I don't use them, even if little bits of 
the insecticide goes on the leaves, they turn black. Yes. So what do you suggest for uh, insecticide usage over them? Uh, do you know what insects are attacking? Is there any reason you're, you, you need to put it on it? No, I don't have a problem, with, but I sold one uh, plant to someone and they are having a problem. Ah. Actually, they are keeping it indoors. That, that's, a, that's a big reason to uh, not keep it indoors. Um, for them, you can use just a thing called insecticidal soap. Uh, and you can make it if you have uh, access to uh, like dish soap. Okay. If you have dish soap, you just, um, you take, uh, I don't know, uh, Jerome and Marie, can you help me with uh, the metric system? Uh, like a no teaspoon, no a teaspoon would be uh, whatever a teaspoon to the metric system. In one pint or uh, one liter? One gallon. One so what gallon is a gallon is like two and how many? Four how many? liters. One gallon is four liters. There, there you go. So, so like a teaspoon to four liters and you spray it uh, inside all the little things. It, the, the insect is probably a mealybug. No, I don't think it's that because it uh, moves alone. And the, uh, the person was worried that it is going in the soil. When the, well, mealybugs go in the soil as well. Uh, and know. you can drench the soil with that same, that, same, uh, that same mixture. Okay, and then wash it with uh, fresh water? Uh, it, it won't hurt the, the plant. Um, just if they're keeping it inside, it won't hurt it. But if you, if you spray it and put it outside, it will cause sunburn. So you okay. have to, you, you spray it and you have to let it wash off and then put it outside if they do that. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. Good seeing you. <laughs> Pleasure is fine. Yeah, thank you for joining us so, yeah. so late. Um, we have somebody here that's very needy. So. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, let's see. Uh, I believe Noah has another question. I think she, I saw something. Okay, so I'm muting you right now. Okay, this question is almost, it's almost embarrassing. So this is another <laughs> one. And my question is, like in any other bonsai, do I take the bottom ones and clean the bottom? Or because it's a jade, I don't know, can you leave the leaves no, around? No, uh, you can, I, I take off all the bottom leaves and it's, it's a simple equation. If you have a, the branch and a leaf is underneath, the sun can't get to it. So instead of giving sugar from photosynthesis to the plant, it's actually taking sugar. So it's a net loss to the tree. So whenever on any plant, if you have a leaf that's up underneath or, or hiding in the shade, you can get rid of it. It's, it's a you know, simple, uh, simple uh, uh, square, inverse square law. I do it on all my other bonsai. I don't know why I, I don't do it on these, so. And it, it makes, makes it look so much better too. All right, I'm, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Hi, we're back. <laughs> we had another <laughs> talk. Okay. Um, it's close to feeding time. Yeah. Ah, there you go. They get excited, yeah. <laughs> What is the best and what is the most challenging thing of jades? So oh, the, the best, best what you like the most and what you don't like as much. Um, I like the most is that they, they're the most forgiving if you forget to water them. Uh, uh, one of the most challenging is after a repot. If, if, if you have to cut off some big roots and you don't allow the tree to dry out for a week or so, you end up with uh, serious rotting. I've had one, had one with a, a trunk like that size right there. And I repotted it and it got wet. I, I, I let it out on my, left it out on my bench and it rained that day and it just rotted. I had to cut the whole thing off and and let it dry out and start over as a big cutting. So uh, after a repot, wait at least a week to two weeks before you water it. Keep it out of the sun, keep it out of the out of rain. 
And, uh, but yeah, the, the structure of the tree, the bark, I think it's one of the most, uh, I would say that it would be the, the black pine of, of the succulent world. Sorry, Jerome, with your, uh, with your adeniums. Um, although you do pretty well with them. I think you do, you do probably best in the United States with them. I, lo I love them. Wow, look at yeah. that. Thank you. <laughs> so I actually have a question too. Um, where do you stand on, in terms of the foliation of a, of a jade? Some people are really for it and some are completely against it. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and I think it depends on where you live and your watering habits. See, I'm in Florida. You're, 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 you, know, you used to be in Florida. Um, if I defoliate a, a jade, I have to keep it out of the rain in the summertime uh, because the purpose of the leaves is to help shed water. So if you're, if you're defoliating it and then it rains, you know, Florida is the sunshine, sunshine state, which means it gets rain every day in the summertime. And um, it just, you can rot the, rot the roots right out. But other parts of the world, say like in California, which it doesn't rain hardly ever, defoliation might be a good thing. Uh, it, so it all depends on, on, on what your, 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 how you can control the, the culture that it lives in. Uh, and if you have a big enough tree, you know, the leaves are pretty small anyway. I mean, it's, uh, my nose is bigger. Not your nose, Jerome. You have a cute little button nose, but you're right there. It's not that big of a leaf, and the more branches you have, the smaller they'll be. So, right. I don't know if I answered your question. Oh, you did. You did. Um, it, I've never defoliated my jade because I don't see a need for it. But then I do see people that are really for it, and I've never seen the need to defoliate it. But yeah. what you're saying is, or what I gather from what you said, is that if you do choose to defoliate, make sure that it stays dry after. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, hi everyone. Um, hello, Lauren, Charlie, Edwin. Um, we're at meeting some more people. Thank you so much, everybody that's connecting with us today and with yes. Ed. Yeah, we're gonna talk about Bottomwoods today. And okay. So let's see. I'm gonna go next with Brit. So Brit, you are on mute now. Okay, I just had a quick, simple question. Um, hey, Ed. Don't know if you can see the tree there. Okay, here's the tree. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, just a regular buttonwood. With these here, Ed, when I cut them back, um, how many times a year can you cut the leaves back safely? And then how often in between should you cut the leaves? Should you let them grow all the way back out and then cut them back or... Great, you know, great question. What the, the purpose for leaf pruning is to is to try to force the dormant bud or the, the the bud behind the leaf to to activate, and then that bud hopefully will become another branch. And that little bud that comes out and becomes a branch, you wait till that uh, that wood. Uh, uh, what was that word? Stratifies or. Um, it becomes wood. It's, it's turned brown. It's lignify. Lignify. Lig yeah, lignify is the right word. Okay. So you want it, 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 until it turns to wood or brown color, you're not going to stimulate anything by cutting anything back. But um, as to how many times a year you can do that, it, it all depends on the tree, uh, the nighttime temperatures. Uh, the light that it gets, the watering that it gets, the fertilizing that it gets. I usually can do mine three or at least three or four times throughout, okay. throughout the growing season. And I started a little early this year because the weather's been pretty nice for the last couple of weeks. All right. So I'm going to defoliate today. So just let it grow back out to a full size, full size leaf and then wait till the stem starts to turn brownish. And yeah, then cut, what, cut what, what's going to happen when you take a leaf off, 
you're not going to get another leaf. You're going to get a branch. And that branch is going to have leaves. So you let that branch grow out <clears throat> until, the, until the branch turns from green to brown or hardens. And then you go back in and trim those leaves off and do the whole process over again on okay. that sub-branch. So every, every main branch is going to have a sub-branch. Every sub-branch is going to have a sub-sub-branch until you get a, a really good uh, 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 amount of branches on your tree. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to go next with Lauren. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Hey, Lauren. Hey, Lauren. Hi. Good seeing you, Ed. You're looking good. Thank you. Okay, too. hard to see because I'm using my computer. Um, I have this buttonwood. I call it dolphin uh, because of the thing up here. I now, see it, yeah. Growth here happening right here, and then I have this other growth here. Yeah. Should... I delete this growth and let this growth go here, take over. Could you raise it a little higher for me? There you go. Uh, or cut back and try to get this to tighten. I, I think ultimately, because this is a cascade and buttonwood cascades are kind of far and few between, um, I would probably leave that growth up there until you, it's, it's helping you grow roots right now. And that's what okay. you want to do. And you also want to, to um, if you look at the transition in, in thickness from the end of the, of the, of the uh, main branch to that new branch, it's pretty small, large to small right now. So the longer you let that grow out, that's going to thicken. And then the transition size will be a little bit more believable between the you know for the taper okay so I, would, I leave it in a grow pot or should i just go ahead and plant it uh i like to get my trees into pots as soon as i can the bonsai pots sometimes you got to go with a larger bonsai pot than you really want uh, down the road but the the the, the benefit is um, the drainage is better the soil is better and, and uh, the tree ultimately will, will grow better if it's put into a bonsai pot with good bonsai soil. Um, okay, yeah, this is actually looks like beach sand. So really? it's really rough looking soil. Yeah. Well, the, the buttonwoods will really do well in, in, uh, in, our, in our good three part mix. So, okay, uh, and go ahead and just take the leaves down three quarters of a way. Yep, I would leaf prune it that way. I do that. I, I cut off and leave it like a, a third of the leaf on there. And the only reason I do that is because it leaves a little bit of structure on the tree. So it okay. gives, you a little bit of, gives you a little bit of structure. It's, it's, you, go ahead. It's I'm the sorry. same thing. It's the same thing as leaf pruning, only you're leaving part of the leaf. Alrighty. And do you think I should just carve these guys here out or get rid of them? No, I like those. You like those? Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Stay well. Thank you, you too. All right, and uh, I am going to mute now, Brandon, to the next one. Hello. So this is um, a tree that I'd like some advice on. I received the tree um, at the end of uh, last summer and slip potted it um, uh, about a month later after it was, I felt it was acclimated to my backyard. Um, it's got two to four inches of green growth that is of course new, it hasn't hardened off yet. Um, all I've done was water it, some fertilizer and take some wire off. Um, so I'm kind of looking for advice on what to do next. Well, it really looks healthy. Congratulations. That's this bright green, the color it should be, which is a, which is a big plus. 
any any time we start work on any trees we have, no matter what wood or anything we have, even ficus, they have to be healthy before you start. Okay. This one, this one looks really healthy. I I probably would get in there and and uh, you're at a point right now where you've got enough choices of branches to go with the line you see and start um, creating main line and then the subline branches to get your tertiary growth and uh, and fill out your pads. It looks okay. to me like it. I, I'm, I think I see it turning back down on itself. Is that what it does? Yeah, it comes out here and kind of snakes its way. Yeah. This branch is basically the main branch. It's got yeah. everything, everything I, coming I, off of this one. I, I've seen that style work before. And it's really pretty. Okay. So what, yeah, what this I, is the what, main branch. What I think I would do is go ahead and, and uh, starting, where are you at what, located? I'm in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, okay. All right, what are your nighttime temperatures right now? Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's like 55, 60 today. Two days ago, it was 70. So, okay. It's been inside. Uh, I, I've really only had it out sparingly on, you know, 65, 70 degree days just to get some air. Really does my heart good to hear a guy from Cincinnati growing buttwoods. Okay. <laughs> that, it's that's, my first that's, one. So I, that's I, amazing. Know, I, that's amazing. It's it's really amazing. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> well, ho hopefully I'll have success with it. Okay. Having said that you're in Cincinnati, so we got to treat the tree a little differently. Okay. The, the, when, when you leaf prune a tree, um, you, you have to make sure that the amount of time it takes for the tree to re-leaf isn't too long because then the tree will become weak. Okay. Like down, here, I, down here, I can leaf prune a tree and three weeks from now or two and a half weeks from now, it's going to be full of leaves again. In your area, that's going to take a lot longer. And that, that span of time that the tree doesn't have any leaves, it's not making any food. For the roots so the roots die off so you make the tree weak so having said that i probably wouldn't start leaf pruning this thing for another month or so to let the warmer water, temperature until you get into the really hot temperatures yeah okay so we should just kind of let her let her grow um and fertilize the heck out of it yeah let it grow six weeks grow. and then start picking some branches to prune back to open up some space exactly with the leaf prune, um, uh, I've heard you all talk a little bit about pruning three quarters of the leaf compared to the whole leaf. Yeah, that the, the reason that's done, and it's 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 only it's only an aesthetic thing. Okay. If you take three quarters of the leaf off, it's almost the same thing as taking a whole leaf off. And the only reason I I like doing the, the three quarter method is you're when you're done, you still have a little bit of a leaf structure to your tree while it's growing new leaves. Okay. Uh, however, you can go back to the petiole and take the entire leaf off and, and accomplish the same thing. What you're doing is trying to stimulate the bud at the base of the leaf. And that's just one method of doing it. Thank you for the advice and the help. You're welcome. Good, good luck. Cincinnati thank you, thank and Buttonwoods, I can't believe it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. I think I, I saw Tony raising his hand, so I'm going to unmute you. Okay. I did. Hi, how are y'all? Hey, Tony. Good, how are you? I was supposed to be down there now. Uh, <laughs> And obviously we had to cancel it because I really want to meet y'all in person. Y'all are great. Thank really you. Uh, oh, oh, my question. <laughs> I, just, I just, tomorrow this will have been hung for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a, a squid or a snail out of it, hopefully. Uh, so, cool. Does the, can you see the bottom? Do you think it's dry up enough? I mean, it's pretty dry on the bottom. If you use please, your finger... Uh, and you push on the bottom, does your finger sink in or is it like pretty hard? Pretty hard. So you can feel the resistance, right? Yeah. Okay, definitely. then you're good. Then you're good. good. 
And even with the leaves staying on, I thought the leaves would fall off. You know, you'll be surprised. Um, did you hang it? Did yeah, it? hung okay. it under the eaves. Okay, so when you hang it, more wind can get to it than if you lay it down. So sometimes the leaves stay on, right? Okay. Um, are you in Florida too? No, I'm in Houston. Oh, in Houston. Okay. Um, you'll be surprised how much water they can store, right? Um, so it's totally normal that the leaves stay on. Like I've dried out an adenium one time where I tried to really shrivel it and I hung it in the shade for over a year and it still didn't shrivel all the way down. Wow. So yeah, you're fine. Well, I'm ready to, I got one last question. I'm ready to uh, pot it tomorrow. Actually tomorrow's, I wait till two weeks exactly. Okay. Uh, I'm going to repot it. Uh, should I use a, a fairly small container? It's not a very big plant. It's, uh, to, and then water the hell out of it, the heck out of it, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to put it at an angle with the, with the plastic on the bottom, like you did on the snail. Okay. So if you want to do it like the snail exactly, um, I would install a plate. Um, you can use like a tile or like a lid. Uh, once you insert the screw though, and you pot it, I would wait another week to two weeks to let it completely dry out. Because as we use the uh, lava rocks and the chopstick to fill in all the soil, right? We scratch the, uh, the cortex of the adenium. And then you're opening up wounds again. Also, when you put the screw into the bottom, you're opening up a wound, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to let that dry out again? That's before, very important. Before potting it? Um, so you can put the screw, pot it, and then wait oh, okay. another two weeks. Because that incision with the screw is small enough where you can get away with it when it's uh, potted. Okay. And by the way, your bonsai soil is excellent. I've been doing my own, but I love yours. So Thank you so much. Uh, a little commercial, but thank you so much. And, <laughs> uh, really, really enjoy your, your web page and your videos and everything. So thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Thank, thank you. you. The soil is def definitely like 90% of the success of, of the trees. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we love it. Uh, it's going to be your Charlie. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I haven't signed up for the boot camp yet because I'm finishing the rain tree. Right. Um, but this tree is real laggy. You see that? Yes. And would you wait until the flowers came off like you were talking about and wait till it gets hot before you work with it? So if you wire it, you can wire it already. Even, even if it has flowers, just make sure that you don't like uh, damage the flower buds. Uh, but you can wire it right now. But in terms but, of trimming it back, I would not at this stage. You would not. Okay. No. That, that's in dirt. I mean, so I need to put that in bonsai soil. Really like good bonsai soil, again, will help because you won't stay wet for too long. Thank you. Of course, of course. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Yeah. And you guys have a private We have a right? date tomorrow. Yeah. Charlie and I. <laughs> okay, um, that's awkward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Charlie, I know you were mentioning that you haven't signed up for the online uh, boot camp. So I just wanted to jump in uh, pretty quickly for those that don't know yet. Um, I asked them to write this course where they will share all their tips, their tricks, their secrets, what it works. Um, so to help everybody to succeed with specific species. Because at the end, every tree is different and it's important that everybody knows um, how to treat the species that they have. So we created um, Desert Roses, Jerome. Um, Adam has jades um, and uh, it has buttonwoods. Jerome also added a Brazilian rain tree um, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna keep adding some species. So I believe Adam is working on a ficus. We're gonna focus on tropicals first. Um, but if you have one of these species, I will highly recommend it. They are only $5, so they won't break the bank. Um, or even if you don't have the species yet, but you think about getting it, it's always good to get yourself informed first before you go get the species. Like before yeah. I even uh, start to play with the new species, I always like to inform myself about everything so that I know what time of the year to do what and how to approach it successfully right from the beginning. 
Yeah. And the best part is that you get to join a private Facebook group where um, Jerome is in there or Adam or Ed, depending on the species. And that group is all about that specific species. So in the desert rose one, you will all talk about their desert roses only. And if you have any doubts or any questions, you can post pictures there, ask Jerome. Um, so you can follow up with the content of the course and with your bonsai journey. So you will be part of that group and whatever questions you might have while you have a desert rose, um, we'll be able to help you. So that's, that's, that's my favorite part actually. <laughs> so just check yeah. it out if you guys are interested. It's on, on our website, thebonsaisupply.com and it's online bonsai bootcamp. So right now, bonsai I also wanted to say that um, these online classes, by the way, they were her idea. When this whole um, thing came about that we're not allowed to leave the house. Yeah, a round of applause, everybody. When the whole coronavirus came to the United States, she was like, oh, we have to teach online. And so she really started to do research. And she told Adam, she's like, I need to have a Jade class immediately and add this and me that. So, and then she puts them all together. So she makes those classes look really good. Yeah, I mean, something that people, my no no is that i'm actually a beginner i i know a not lot anymore of, i know a lot not about anymore. bonsai because of jerome and i also have done my all my own research however i don't really i'm not a, the artist like I, I don't work on the trees or anything like that in fact as soon as i see a frog or a <laughs> lizard i'm out that's true but with this being said and with uh like seeing everybody at the store asking about the same questions and not knowing uh, maybe their climate or you know why tropicals wouldn't work where they are or what is the whole the different treatment depending on where you are located and the species are different so I'm like you know like the really success in bonsai is to know really know the species that you have because every true. every bonsai is different and many people think that they can treat it the same um, and it's you can treat them the same to a certain degree right. But then once you really want to dive into it right. and, and become a, a, a specialist or a master of that and master that species, you have to learn everything about it. And the more you learn, the more you realize, oh man, this tree is completely different from anything else. Yeah. Like I'm studying a lot of maples right now and I'm amazed by how different they are from each other, like maple to maple. And so, and it's nice to see um, somebody that already succeeded with those species and, and take their advices and see, you know, you don't want to have the same mistakes or you don't have to have the same mistakes right. that they already went through. And so your, the process will be faster for you and more successful because we know this can be also frustrating sometimes, you know, when the trees die or they don't go the way that you want to. So. Yes. Very yeah, true. you see, like before we leave, I see, Vicky, you have a tree. Do you want to have a question? Let me unmute you. You love putting people on the spot, huh? I just saw a tree. <laughs> I wanted to see. Um, I, I, I was really hey. just kind of listening in, but um, I, I did also have um, one of mine that the tips are starting to turn black. It is in bonsai soil. Um, I wasn't sure what was doing that or, or, or what I needed to do to stop it. And you kind of addressed that a while ago already. Let me ask you this, um, are all the leaves turning brown or is it just a few? It is, um, actually, it's not the, let me see if I can, it's not the leaves, it's the, let's see if I can put the camera in the right place. It's the tips. So like right there, can you see how the tips are turning black? Oh, so it looks like the, um, the butts are turning black, right? Um, can I you guess. Can you remove it with your finger? What'd you say? Say that again. Can you uh, remove it with your finger when you touch them, the black spots? At the very tips I can, yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. Nothing, that's nothing to worry about. Okay, but like this part of the branch is black. And is it squishy? Not really. Is it solid? Pretty solid, yeah. Nothing to worry about. 
This coloration okay. of the bark. When the trees are young, they, they tend to do that sometimes, where the, the branches, you know, have different colors. Yeah. And typically, I like to look for that grayish color. Uh, and that's when I know it's time to trim it. When you have that light green color, uh, don't trim it yet. Okay. I will tell you that this one right here is in y'all soil. And you can okay. see it's got more leaves than this one <laughs> that's in a... Uh, a regular smaller grain. By the way, we didn't pay these people to say that, okay? <laughs> awesome. But thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Good to hear. It's good to hear that the soil is working. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so it's feeding time over here. You can see Brandon already it's came Easter to, Bunny. to let us know. <laughs> So thank you so much, everybody that joined us today. I'm gonna unmute everybody so we can say bye and it's not awkward <laughs> to just say bye myself. So let me unmute everybody. All right. Everybody bye -bye. be safe. Happy bye -bye. Easter. Bye -bye. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you so much. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. 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 All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I encourage you to go ahead and check out the uh, online boot camps on our websites. They're a lot of fun. They're very easy to learn and straight to the point. Um, we also just added the Brazilian rain tree uh, boot camp, so go ahead and check that out as well. Yeah, and because of that, we thought it would be fun to do our live Q&A that is happening next week on Brazilian rain trees. So we're gonna leave the link below where you can register for a live Q&A on Zoom. And it has a limited capacity, but go ahead and try to register and we would love to see your rain trees and your questions about rain trees. And then we'll post it on YouTube as well. But we would love to have the live Q&A on Zoom this next week. Yes. So also make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you like this video and we will catch you guys next time.